Excellent. I was holding my breath there for a few moments, but we're back. OK, so what has happened here is that the file which we looked at previously, the product file, has now been loaded. And based on the knowledge we've already built up our domain, and now this rule we've just built above, the server has tried to um, match our items together. So in the first example we can look at, we can actually see that it's brought three rows together under a single cluster. So the cluster identifies your matches. And it said these three rows, it considers to be actually the same uh, product in effect. So interestingly, or critically perhaps, is that actually even though my code appears to be different here, because of a knowledge we've already captured in within our product code domain regarding the fact that uh, this particular value which lacks the prefix actually gets corrected to um, have the prefix means that the codes here will all have been considered the same. For these two rows we'll see that the colour should have matched because they're, they're not just similar, they're identical and all three of them have a, have a very similar name, again an identical name. So how we begin to understand how these matches have worked is by looking at the score. So if I just scroll across what we'll see is that the first two items have actually scored 100%, meaning as far as the rule is concerned, every element of the rule has, has been positive, has, has been correct. So again, just flicking back, that means obviously the name is the same, the code is considered the same, and in this case, the colour is considered the same. However, the third row has also matched, but with less confidence, and that 10% we've lost is because there was no colour, and that equated to this 10% weighting we'd assigned to the colour um, domain within our rule. So that's one example. Let's just quickly look at a couple of the other examples where we've built logic or built knowledge within our domain. So here we can see that we have road bikes, um, same name, same code, different colours. However, actually, the match is still 100% because we'd set up a synonym between white and uh, off-white, sorry, and cream, and they're actually considered to be the same colour. Finally, if we just scroll down um, to one of our short examples, again here, we've got um, sports shorts um, twice. So the name would look as if it is different, and therefore we wouldn't expect it to um, deliver a full 30% weighting within the product name. The code is obviously same, and the colour is different. So um, we might anticipate that this would um, you know, have a score somewhere below 90, but again, because of our lookup between sh the abbreviation for shorts and the full word shorts, we actually score a full 90 because it's recognised that these two product names are actually identical. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my rule. It's worked how I wanted it to. It's brought together the rows that I think it should have brought together. We can quickly see the rows that it hasn't brought together. And then, yeah, I already know that this is actually a, a single row within my text file. So the rule is working fairly well. At this point then, <clears throat> I can just move forward. Um, I can see the uh, profile information for the information I brought forward. And if I now run it, the file through again, I'll actually get my full match results appearing. Again, this should only take a few moments. <clears throat> and now I get a very pretty graph showing me my match results, showing that there was one unmatched value, 25 um, potential duplicates were found. And if I minimise uh, those tabs, I can actually begin to see in a little bit more detail again uh, what's happened through that process and how the rows have been brought together. OK, I will finish that, and again, because we've been creating some knowledge, that will get published to my server, and that matching rule will now be available in my knowledge base. So now we have a knowledge base that really can help us improve the quality of our data. And one way to do that is through a cleansing project, an interactive one. So let's create a quick project. Give it a name. Crucially, select our knowledge base which has all got our, our knowledge around product, select the activity to be cleansing, click create, 
and I can walk through a very similar exercise as we, we just um, com completed. I'm actually going to use the, the same file, but this time, because I'm actually in a project mode, I'm not just building up my knowledge, I'm actually going to apply that knowledge, and then I'll be able to make use of um, my output. So, so far, I haven't been able to export any of the information that I've um, cleaned. Whereas within this project, this is exactly what I'll be able to do. So, I'm just using the same file for simplicity. So, we'll run next. Uh, sorry, we'll click next. We'll run the, pro the cleansing process. So, this is just cleansing. No matching, no deduplication of data is going to happen. But it's going to enrich my data. And it's going to try and make some suggestions about how um, you know, other things I may want to consider. So it's just working through the process. It's now complete. So it's tried to correct four values. It's come up with some suggested values. Um, this is generally the completeness of my uh, file that I've loaded and the accuracy of my file. Um, so again, this just gives me very basic profile information about the data. If I click Next, uh, I can begin to understand a bit more what's happened through that file. So let's work backwards. Let's look at the correct. So these are all the rows that Having applied my knowledge base, it can't find anything wrong with them. They look valid. They look good rows. And hence, it's just giving me a list. And I've got the ability to approve or reject any one of these rows. It's corrected some data for me. So <clears throat> it will have, uh, where I had sport shorts um, uh, you know, with an abbreviation, it will have corrected that for me. It uh, will have corrected any colors, which I may have termed as being um, off-white, which should have actually been, sorry, which were cream and have been forced to be off-white, etc. Again, I can approve or reject any of this. If there's some data it considers to be invalid. Obviously, we're looking at this uh, the, the, the row here. And it's also identified that there's a new um, combination of data here that it's not seen before, as well as made some suggestions about how it might want to correct other data, but with a lot lower confidence than may um, give it a, a suitable level of confidence to have just corrected it automatically. And again, I can decide whether to approve or reject any of this data. Once I've been through that review, that interactive review, I again come back to a summary of what the data looks like, what's happened to the data, how it's been corrected. And at this point, I've got the ability to actually export the data out of the server, back into SQL Server if I wanted to, or into a, a CSV file. So we'll complete our project there and we'll very quickly also look at a match project so created in exactly the same way select our knowledge base select this time the activity to be matching select the same file just for simplicity Hopefully this time it will remember all the mappings. Great. Click Next. Just click Start. Again, it will give me a profile of the data. It will do an amount of cleansing on the data. Um, but the important step here within the matching project will be the survivorship. This is all about understanding that when I have duplicates, I need to rationalize the data that I've loaded. And therefore, I need to determine which row within my match clusters, I'm actually going to retain. So it's quickly run this. Uh, I've got the same sort of information we were looking at before. I can look at the match results we've already seen because we, we use this file to help define our, our match policy. I can just um, shrink that down so I could review that data. But I just want to quickly move on to the survivorship piece where I can actually now determine which row I should um, retain when I find a match, whether it's the most complete the longest or a combination of the most complete and longest. So I'm going to select most complete and longest. And if I click start now, again, the data will look much the same as we've already been looking at. The crucial point will be that where I now have a cluster of matched records, it will have ensured that the parent of that cluster is the row with the most, which is the most complete and the longest out of the, the cluster. So within this example, um, whereas before, when we were reviewing our match for this particular product, we actually had BKM101 as the parent within the cluster. But by having now specified who we want to, which value we want to survive, it's taken the decision that actually this row is the most complete row and the value that we should be retaining. 
and that will be the same for all our other cases within our match policy. And again, having completed this matching and having identified our survivors, we could then click next. Oh. Oh, this looks less promising. Let's hope it comes back. Ah, it looks like it's getting somewhere. Here we go. We move on to the export. And again, just as within our cleansing um, project, we're able to determine whether we want to export the data out to a CSV file or a SQL Server database. Uh, exporting all of the information we've just um, obtained through this matching project or just the, the survivor results, i.e. the rows that we actually want to retain. So I'll just click finished again there. And we'll actually leave the uh, client at that point. Having created our knowledge base and having used our knowledge base interactively within the tool, so our other options um, for making use of our knowledge base then are both integration services and MDS. So I'll just very quickly show um, what the task looks like in uh, integration services. So within our other transforms, you will now find a new task called DQS clean, uh, Cleansing. Um, I've already dragged it onto the page and connected it to uh, the same Excel file again. Just very quickly double click on there. Um, so I've created a, a connection to my DQS server. I've selected the knowledge base that we've been working on. And here are those familiar domains we've been working with. Um, and they're available within this component now of INSYS. I can map my data source, whether it be a file or a you know, database table, onto my um, uh, domain and my knowledge base. So I could perhaps include color. And I can determine that that should be matched to my color domain. Um, and then the advanced features just determine um, what uh, information is also going to be um, sent out of this particular component when I use it within the data flow. Uh, I won't go into any more detail, but hopefully you, under, you can see the principles that we can now send data through um, DQS, through our knowledge base, and out the other side we'll now get our cleanse data, which we can then continue to work with within an integration package. What I do want to do, though, is just go back now to our um, MDS example and just look at data integration um, within that. So let me just go back onto where we had product. I'll just, to be sure, um, reload product. Just to make sure we're in a good, clean state. OK. So, and actually what I'm going to do, I'm just going to filter out the subcategory and the size uh, attributes just to slightly reduce the amount of information we're working with and sorry need to press load to get it to refresh itself and I'll just remove the hide status so we've got a, a, a slightly easier set of data to have a look at here so there are a couple of features I just want to finish on around matching the first piece is actually map sources. So this is, that isn't related to DQS, but we're going to use this in this example. So this will allow me to um, map a, another source of data within Excel to my entity that I'm managing within um, MDS. So I can hit a range of data. And I'm actually going to go back to this sample data where we started. And I'm going to select um, my three columns here. Just go back into a dialog and I can map those to my uh, attributes of my uh, entity within MDS. So again, we've got name, code and color. And when I click combine, it will actually bring that data that I uh, referenced within Excel into my um, entity within the MDS uh, pivot table. Now, at this point, I could try and publish the data. However, it's fairly obvious I've got some duplicates within here which are going to cause errors when I try and publish. So I may want to try and uh, deduplicate this data within MDS and then publish. So actually, I can do that using the knowledge base we've just built up within DQS. If I click on Match, and if I select, my again, my knowledge base, I can now simply map the fields of my MDS entity so I can map code to the code product code domain within my DQS uh, knowledge base. Do the same for name and color.
And if I hit OK, the data within this spreadsheet will now be sent to DQS and the matching rule that we created within our knowledge base will be applied to this data as well as all the different um, cleansing elements we created within our knowledge base. So we're accessing all that knowledge within DQS from MDS and hopefully when this returns it will have um, uh, created a level of matching that we can then use to uh, manipulate this data so that we have a clean set of records that we can publish back. So we can see we've got some clusters here. So we've got it's managed to map uh, mountain bikes. And again, it will have done the substitution for this particular value. Um, similarly, where we've got uh, things like shorts, it will have done the suitable substitutions. Um, and I can actually just sh show a bit more information behind that. So we begin to get our cluster IDs and our record IDs and the scores that we were looking at before. Now, interestingly, all these have scored 90, and that's because actually the original data I had in MDS, so the rows that aren't of the orange um, color, never had any um, colors assigned to them, and hence we were never going to score that extra 10% where we'd um, give them the weighting to the color of the product. Um, unfortunately, now I don't have any uh, easy means of identifying the, the survivor except manually going through these rows, which I won't do now um, because it's a fairly laborious task. Okay. So we've now looked at um, MDS, uh, the Excel add-in. We've very quickly looked at DQS, uh, and we've also looked at how the two of those two items integrate. And that really concludes all I wanted to show today. So the key points of today's sessions, as I say, we wanted to just show you um, how easy it is now to interact with MDS within the Excel environment and to really improve the accessibility and the ability um, for data stewards and information workers to uh, work with master data interactively. And similarly, from a data quality services perspective, I hope you've began to understand the, um, the importance of what the knowledge base is within this solution and the value of which how, and how domains interact with the knowledge base to um, define that knowledge. And similarly, then, how you can begin to make use of that knowledge, not just interactively within data quality services client itself, but also within integration services and master data services. Okay, thank you very much for joining us for part three of our SQL Server 2012 webinar series. Please email events at imgroup.com with any questions or requests for follow-up, and we hope we, uh, you can join us for the rest of the series. Thank you very much for your time, um, and please, yeah, don't hesitate to email us if you would like any further explanation, as I appreciate. It was a pretty quick tour of uh, a very interesting and new capability within SQL Server. Thank you.